Okay, good afternoon and uh, welcome to the North Carolina Ski Areas Association's Economic Value Press Conference. My name is Kim Yoko. I'm the president of the North Carolina Ski Areas Association and my husband and I own and operate Sugar Mountain Resort. Thank you very, very much for coming, everyone. It's really, um, it's great. It's like a very good time, turnout, a great turnout. Um, so when the world was created, North Carolina's Appalachian Mountains received special consideration. The highest mountains east of the Rockies, temperatures cold enough for snowmaking, incredible scenery, and some of the friendliest folks in the world. There's winter fun in these North Carolina, North Carolina mountains for everyone. Beginner skiers, advanced skiers, snowboarders, snowtubers, ice skaters, and snowshoers can all enjoy a mountain experience right here in North Carolina. Six winter recreational resorts make up the North Carolina Skiers Association, and I'd like to introduce the principles from each resort. So Appalachian Ski Mountain, we have Grady and Reba Moretz, and Brad Moretz, and Brenda Moretz, all right over here in this corner. Uh, from Beach Mountain, we should have Ryan, and I haven't seen him. Uh, Ryan, are you here? I know he's supposed to be here. Anyway, uh, Ryan, Cost Ryan Costin and Gil Adams should both be here. I run them a little late. Um, and Catalucci Ski Area, Chris Bates right over here. Chris. Uh, Sapphire Valley, um, they couldn't come today. And Sugar Mountain Resort, Gunter Yokel right over here. And Wolf Ridge Ski Resort, we've got Orville English over there. And then Rick Bussey as well. These are who, who we are and what stands behind the economic value study. Our RC associates, the recognized leader in consumer intelligence and strategic market research for the tourism and recreation industries, conducted the North Carolina Ski Areas Association's economic value study. Our RC associates is based in Boulder, Colorado, and Dave Bielan, our RC's director of consulting services, will now give a detailed briefing of the 14 and 15 season value analysis. Thanks again for coming. All right, excellent. Thank you very much, Jim. And uh, yeah, thanks everybody for coming. This is a great turnout. I'm thrilled to have so many of you guys here uh, to listen to what hopefully won't be uh, too boring of a presentation. A lot of numbers in this one, so if you're uh, not a numbers person, watch out. Um, yeah, as Kim mentioned, we uh, work with a lot of areas, mountain recreation communities, uh, towns, and uh, tourism based organizations, including a lot of state organizations helping to measure and monitor and, and document the impacts of tourism and um, so we, we conducted this research study for the North Carolina Skiers Association and I want to thank the association as well as the six member areas very much for working with us on this study. So um, let's just get right into it. We've got um, a little outline here of um, the methodology behind the study just so you guys know where we got these numbers. We didn't just make them up. Okay, we worked really hard to uh, aggregate all, the, all this information that's in the report. Um, I thought I'd actually spend a little bit of time talking about the, the U.S. ski industry as a whole. We do quite a lot of consulting work with skiers all across the country. Just to give you a little bit of perspective for maybe some of you in the room that aren't familiar with the ski industry, kind of what are some of the major highlights that are going on in the U.S. as a whole. And then we'll get into some North Carolina-specific information, economic value, um, other benefits beyond just the dollar amounts that can be measured in that way. Um, some demographic and visitor characteristics. We, we document some very, very interesting and positive patterns about visitors to North Carolina ski areas through the study. And we'll hit those real quickly and then we'll wrap up with a couple of observations. And then I'd be happy to have a you know, question and answer session at the end. So uh, um, we'll, we'll finish with that. So just a, a brief overview of the methodology. How do we do this study? How do we gather these numbers? Why do we feel very confident in the information that we got? Well, we did, uh, we worked with uh, five of the ski areas in the state. We collected almost 2,000 surveys of the visitors while they were here for their ski or snowboard trip. Uh, we'll get into all those results, but um, the survey asked about their demographics, where they're from, what they're, uh, who they're with, how, how long they're here, um, how much they're spending, their satisfaction with their experience, and how frequently they come, you know, a lot of characteristics about who's coming, and it's really great information to be able to use. Uh, I do want to make a special thank you to the ski areas in the room who helped us go out and collect that information. We designed the surveys, 
but the ski areas and their personnel actually administered the surveys on the ground throughout the winter, this past winter, interviewing, following a schedule that we had set up, following a methodology that we gave them, but they were the ones who ran with the ball. So for the ski area operators who contributed by providing staff and providing resources to administer those surveys, I really thank you because we can't do this information without that solid primary market research. So thanks to all the ski areas. We did that, and then we also did a ski area operator survey, which documented number of ski visits, revenues, number of employees, capital expenditures, how many days they were open, just a lot of the characteristics of the ski area itself. And a lot of that information helps to backstop and under underscore the consumer survey, the ski area visitor survey. So there were sort of two two surveys that were done: one of the visitors and one of the ski area operations itself. So like I said, we did almost, almost 2,000 surveys of visitors to North Carolina ski areas um, at Appalachian Beach, Catalucci, Sugar, and Wolf Ridge. Um, and then we took those surveys, uh, the results, we weighted them a little bit to, to make them balance out with the volume of business that each of those ski areas do, so that it was representative of the total number of uh, all the ski areas in the state. We did not have um, information from Sapphire Valley, but we extrapolated for them to um, accommodate the, 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 uh, the surveys and the information from Sapphire Valley. So this is representative of the entire state's six ski areas in this study. So let's get into just a few things about the, the U.S. ski industry. I thought it would be helpful and instructive to just give you a little bit of background. Uh, this past 2014-15 season was a little bit of a down year overall in the U.S. ski industry. We saw total ski year visits visits, downhill visits, skier visits include snowboarders. Um, anybody go riding a lift for one day is one skier visit. So there's 53.6 million skier visits in, nationally in the U.S. in this past 14-15 season. Now it's down 5.2% from the year before. Um, overall, it was a pretty tough snow year in most regions of the country, and when you look at it in aggregate across the, across the country, it was the uh, second worst snowfall in 24 years that we have been tracking this information. And you know, snowfall and weather conditions play a high, are highly correlated with the skier visits and the volume of business. So that was um, definitely part of the cause for some of that decline. You know, that weather volatility, especially in places like the Pacific Northwest, up in Washington, Oregon, even down in the Lake Tahoe, uh, Northern California, were very difficult. They had very challenging years, a lot of them had only operated maybe 25% of the total number of days that they typically operate. And so that was a real, real burden on the securities in that part of the country. Um, the number of lessons that people are taking relative to the total skier visit volume was, was stable. It's about 8% of all visits have a lesson associated with them. And I'll get into that in a second about how the industry is very, very focused on bringing more people to the sport, the beginner experience, the first time experience, and getting those people to want to come back. And we'd like to see the lessons outpacing the skier visits, but, but that uh, ratio is stable this year. Uh, season passes were up overall, uh, and so the number of season passes sold across the US, uh, but the frequency with which those passes were used, the number of days per pass holder that were used were down. So there's a little bit of an up and down when it came to season passes. Uh, we saw, uh, in terms of the share of visits from people coming to spend a night at a ski area somewhere in the US versus those just coming for a day trip, a little bit more overnight visitors, a little bit fewer day visitors this past winter overall. We also saw that snowboarding, which had been growing quite a bit as a share of all visits in the US, has plateaued over the last three years or so. It's about 28% of all visits are snowboarding and 72% are skiing. Um, ticket price and yield were up, so the price of tickets and, and the, the, the dollars amounts that the resorts were getting per ticket, uh, but the, the ratio of the ticket price that they actually uh, earned versus the window ticket rate was down slightly. So that's another thing we track real closely, how much your security is charging for a ticket, and then how much do they actually get in revenue after you kind of incorporate all the discounts, all the season passes, all the other kind of things out there. So overall, it was kind of an up and down year, depending on how you want to look at it in the US. Uh, like I mentioned, total US year visits in this graph on the far right is the uh, this past year, 53.6 million visits. 
This looks at visits since 1978-79. And the darker the green the bars are, the higher the visits were, and the, the red colors are low, low season visits. So you can see the darker, there's a bunch of dark greens in the mid-2000s and then early 2010s, but this, this past few years have been a little bit lower than historically. The record number of, of skier visits in the U.S. is 60.5 million, and um, the, the low, the most recent low is 51 million. So you can see there's sort of a range in which the U.S. skier visits tend to operate in that range. Um, by um, region of the country, the southeast region, which obviously incorporates North Carolina, was off slightly, about 1.4% down, but um, uh, better than the 5.2% down from the U.S. as a whole. The um, Northeast was down almost 1%, the Rocky Mountains was down 2%, so the Northeast, Southeast, and Rocky Mountains fare the best um, relative to other regions. And you can see the Pacific Northwest, which I mentioned a little earlier, was down 36% in visits versus the year before. Now, uh, and we'll get into this a little bit, North Carolina was up in skier visits over last year. Um, so North Carolina not only bucked the trend of the southeast region, but bucked the trend nationally as well. So um, a great, great winter this past winter here in North Carolina. Um, when we look at areas in this, of, of focus, just overall, what are ski areas kind of talking about? What are they looking forward to? What are they planning for in the future? Like I mentioned, beginner conversion is a big deal. There's a lot of ski areas really focused on how can we get the people who come to try skiing and snowboarding to keep coming back and to keep coming back because that's how the industry is going to grow. And uh, a lot of ski areas have programs in place to monitor people who come to get them to come back a second time, to get them to come back a third time. And, and that's a real area of focus for a lot of ski areas. Millennials are young adults age 18 to 34. It's a huge generation overall nationally in the U.S. and it is the, currently the largest uh, cohort of skiers and snowboarders uh, in the U.S. as well. Uh, the industry is really focused on continuing to grow not only the number of millennials who are skiing and snowboarding, but also the number of days that those millennials who do participate come out more. And so we're seeing a lot of things like increased focus on you know, digital, mobile marketing, a lot of focus on food and beverage, a lot of focus on Wi-Fi and Instagram accounts, and a lot of other ways to, to be in touch with millennials, uh, to get them to, to engage with the with skiing so we get them to keep coming back. Um, season pass partnerships are, are a big deal in the industry right now, where you've got a lot of different companies that own different ski areas coming together to offer joint season passes. A lot of these season passes actually offer skiing privileges in other countries, in South America, Chile, New Zealand, uh, Canada. So um, ski areas are getting creative about coming up with products that are going to motivate people to want to purchase that product and then maybe try a new area. There's the Epic Pass, there's the Mountain Collective, there's the Rocky Mountain Super Pass Plus, there's the Powder Alliance, and there's a lot of other joint season pass products that are really out there, and that's, that's a big focus. Summer activities and summer operations are, are finally kind of taking off at ski areas between um, festivals and concerts, downhill mountain biking, zip lines and canopy tours, weddings, you know, you name it. Um, skiers are really getting into that business overall, much more so than they had in the past 10 years. Focus on consumer satisfaction is very, very high. Many skiers are doing um, you know, a lot of research, staying in touch with their customers, really focus on that experience because they realize that the scheme is obviously the reason people are coming, but the service is the reason that people will come back. And training your employees, really good customer satisfaction is, is very important. And finally, you know, offering a really complete visitor experience, shopping, dining, ice skating, lodging, um, all kinds of other activities, you name it. Some of these summer activities like zip lines and mountain coasters actually run in the winter time too and so giving people lots of reasons to want to come and come back and do different things um, skiing's obviously snowboarding obviously the main reason people come but there's a lot more diversity in activities and skiers are offering both in the winter and in the summer too so those are some some overall observations about what's going on in the u.s what u.s skiers are thinking about what u.s 
last year as you joined. One, one great, quick graph that um, we've been tracking the numbers of, of people who participate in snow sports by their age cohort. And the millennials, I don't know if you can see this very well, that purple line at the top right, 4.1 million millennials participate in skiing and snowboarding. And that's obviously up from 20 years ago. The Gen X generation is the, the light blue line kind of in the middle there, and they're basically steady, maybe down slightly. Gen X is age 35 or 36 to about 49. And then you've got a couple of baby boom generations, but the baby boom generation is turning downward, the millennial generation is turning upward. So that's over the past five years, really the focus is focusing on these millennial young adults. So let's talk a little bit about the North Carolina ski industry and how does it fit into the overall U.S. ski industry and how does, what makes North Carolina the same or what makes North Carolina different and where does North Carolina stack up? So like we mentioned, I mean, most of you guys know where all the markets, where all the ski areas are in the state, they're obviously in the western half of the state. Um, but I, I put this up here a little bit because you can see on this map a little bit of the, the key markets where people come from to ski at North Carolina. Here. So you've obviously got Charlotte, you've got Atlanta, just off to the right there you've got Raleigh-Durham, you've got Winston-Salem, um, and then further off this map you've got, you've got Florida, Orlando, Tampa, you've got um, Columbia, South Carolina, Greenville, South Carolina. So this puts it in context of where, where your key markets are in North Carolina. So six key areas, overall a couple of key stats, 653,000 skier visits in 2014-15. Uh, that's up 7.5% 7 7 from the year before. So like we saw, the US was down 5.2%, North Carolina was up 7.5%. 39, almost $40 million in revenue, total gross revenue for the six ski area operators in the state. And we'll get it, that's up, um, that's up 34% since the last time we did this study, which was in 2009-10. Um, 87 year-round employees, 1,787 seasonal employees, so almost 1,900 employees total in the industry. Uh, and that number is up, uh, I think, 13%. Up, the number of employees is up 13% from five years ago. And capital expenditure is $8.5 million. So ski areas are investing their, their um, profits back into their ski areas, like I said, to improve the customer experience, improve customer satisfaction, make it better. Um, North Carolina, there's about 37 states in the U.S. that have ski areas, if you can believe it, including Alabama. Uh, there's a ski area in Alabama. Um, <clears throat> there are 37 states in the U.S. that have skiing and snowboarding. North Carolina is 18th, France 18th in that list. They're just behind, uh, North Carolina is just behind New Mexico and Wyoming in terms of total ski area visits, that 653,000 number. Just behind New Mexico and Wyoming, just ahead of Virginia and West Virginia. So you guys are really you know, kicking, kicking butt when it comes to generating ski visits here compared to, you know, you're sort of out punching your weight class when it comes to, you know, there's a lot of ski areas in, in West Virginia, New Mexico, Wyoming, New Jackson Hole in Wyoming, and that's a big ski area, there's a lot of business here right behind them. There's a couple other small ski areas in, in Wyoming as well. So that's just to put it in a little bit of context. Um, you guys are your 18th overall in the U.S. Um, and again, a little bit more context here, 653,000 visits, uh, more than the attendance at the Carolina Panthers home games, more than the attendance at the Carolina Hurricanes home games, and just behind the Charlotte Hornet home games from um, this past winter. So it shows you how, how important the ski industry is in North Carolina, gives you a sense of where North Carolina stacks up, both in terms of relative to other states, as well as other attractions, other sporting events, other things that people like to go and do while they're in North Carolina. So um, let's look at historically, we did this study here in 2014-15, the bottom row on this table. We asked the operators about their prior two seasons. We did the study in 2009-10, we asked them about the season before, and then there was some other studies that we did not do going back, occasionally going back to 1976-77. So this isn't every single season, but you can see this is the 653,000 visits up 7.5% from 607,000 the year before, 608,000. 39.9 million in gross revenue, 
8.6 million in total payroll and 1,875 jobs. And uh, you know, you can see all those numbers are, are up pretty strongly. And uh, you know, the more the more skier visits you have, the more employees you have, the more tickets you sell. You know, all those numbers are trending in a positive way. Let's look at the, the economic value now. So, so what we did is we took the survey information that we got from people. And one of the key questions you need to ask people is how much money are you spending while you're here and associated with, uh, associated with your ski trip. Um, so the surveys that we did, the 1,900, almost 2,000 surveys that we did of visitors to five of the six North Carolina ski areas serves as the basis for this economic value. Um, Expenditures both in North Carolina and outside of North Carolina, because what we wanted to do was isolate the impact on North Carolina. Um, what we really wanted to do was get the direct spending because people who come to North Carolina, this is one of the most important parts of this study, is that people who come to North Carolina and ski and snowboard, they're not just buying lift tickets, and the money is not just being spent at the skier, the money is being spent at other places, at lodges, in condos, in restaurants, at gas stations, retail stores, it has a huge impact on the broader community, not just at the ski area itself. And that's one of the key uh, findings on this report. So we quantify direct spending and then we use an economic input-output model to estimate indirect and induced spending, which are called secondary spending. So there's direct spending and secondary spending, and we'll get into that in just a second. So what we ask people who are out here on the slopes, we ask Tell us what you're spending on your trip. Uh, how much you spend on lift tickets, how much you spend on lodging, how much you spend on food and beverage at the ski area, how much you spend on food and beverage around at the ski area and other places, uh, how much you spend on your equipment rental, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You can see all the categories we ask people. We also asked um, you know, how many people are you with? So we figured out that this was on per person spending. It's $182 per person, almost $183 per person. Who, uh, when you add up all that spending, mm -hmm. lift tickets, mm -hmm. lessons, equipment rental, lodging, food and beverage, etc. So percent of the total, the tickets account for 27% of the total spending. So the vast majority of this is not on lift tickets, it's not on other, other spending. So when you take that $183 per person and you, you multiply it by the skier visits, you come up with $119 million in direct expenditures. People are pulling out their wallets and spending $119 million while they're in North Carolina in association with their ski trip at the ski area itself and at other places, other businesses in the community. So it's a huge number, almost $120 million. Um, so this is, this is one of the key findings from the report, $119.5 million is the, is the impact direct impact. So the economic value, we need to estimate the secondary spending, the indirect and induced spending. And, and those are where the employees at the restaurants and at the ski area and at the lodges, when they get their paychecks, they spend those paychecks in town at the grocery store and they spend those paychecks. Food and beverage from suppliers and the ski areas by other supplies from other suppliers. Those are indirect. When the employees are spending money, that's induced. So when you total those up, we took the multiplier that is an estimate of 1.65 times, which is an average of tourism-related impact studies from other, um, other academic publications that looks at that total um, multiplier between the induced and the indirect expenditures. And so the direct value, like you saw, is 119.5 million. You multiply that by 0.65, you get 77.5. So the total is 197 million dollars of economic value to the state of North Carolina that the ski is bring. And so in other words, the GDP of North Carolina would be 197 million dollars less if it wasn't for the ski industry in North Carolina. So that's a big number, you guys should be proud of that. Um, like I said, the one, one area that we can measure with a little bit of certainty that is associated with the ski trip is lodging. And we, the way we can do this is through the um, TDA um, 
can help me. What does that stand for? Tourism Development Authority. Thank you. So they collect taxes on rooms uh, in, in various uh, parts of the state. Some are county-wide, some are towns affiliated. Um, and what we can look at is we can look at the monthly sales, monthly lodging tax from those TDAs, and we can isolate the November through March period and look at the lodging that's lodging tax that's associated with that five month period compared to the, the, the 12 month period of, of the full year. So we can isolate how much winter impact is there from lodging compared to the rest of the year. In places like Sugar Hitch, the village of Sugar Mountain, 78% of their annual TDA collections occur during the, the November through March period. So in five months of the year, 78% of the lodging tax gets generated. In uh, Beach Mountain, 71%. Banner Elk, 51%. So it's about half and half, half summer, half winter. Uh, Madison County, 41%. Um, and even places, uh, other places like uh, Boone is, is more dominated with summer in, in their TDA, but the winter is still about 28% of the annual TDA happens during that five month winter period. So you can really see how important the ski trips are to the, the lodging community. And by, by proxy, you know, it's important to the rest of the community. You guys all know this. You know the seasonality here. You know when it's busy. You know that Christmas week is busy. You know that school vacation times are busy. And those people are coming and spending money. And if, it, if they weren't coming for the ski and snowboard trip, this was, was what you'd be losing. Um, part of the survey, we asked people, what was your main reason for this trip? And 88% of them said that skiing was their number one, skiing or snowboarding is the primary reason for the trip. So they're not just here traveling through, they're coming to ski and snowboard in North Carolina. And if it wasn't for ski and snowboarding, they wouldn't come. So 88% of them said, that's the reason I came. So uh, this is just another way to measure how important the winter season is to the annual tourism, not only in these counties, but for the state as a whole. So other benefits of the industry, you know, we can measure dollars, we can measure sales tax, we can measure percentages, but there's a lot of sort of intangible benefits that come from having a ski and snowboard area in your, in your community, in your county, in your town. Um, you know, some of these are just overall quality of life. It's uh, a great way to get, um, have community pride and have something that people identify with. You know, I, I live in Denver, Colorado, and. I was flying out here yesterday, I, you know, just chit-chatting with some of the fellow passengers on my, on my flight, and every single one of them, I said, I'm going to Sugar Mountain, I'm going to North Carolina. Oh, every single one of them knew Sugar Mountain. Every single one of them knew North Carolina, and how, how you know, that they're skiing, and there's good skiing in North Carolina. So, the quality of life, the, the, the you know, being able to be recognized and known as a place where you can go and ski is nowhere. Um, ex events, exposure, you guys have a lot of activities, and, and festivals and events and you've got, that brings people in, that draws a lot of people. Um, health and wellness, you know, you've got a, a good activity to get people outside in the wintertime. You know, you've got something to get people active, keep them, <coughs> keep them healthy, keep them in shape, keep them, get them outside, especially, you know, young kids. They love being outside in the wintertime and uh, it's a great way to get people outside, keep them healthy, keep them active. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of other benefits you can, you can think of that come from having skiing and snowboarding. Um, in your state. You know, speaking of, of uh, being from Denver, Colorado, you know, we're known as the Mile High City. I think every ski area in North Carolina is higher than the Mile High City. Right here, uh, Sugar Mountain, 5,300 feet. That's 20 feet higher than Denver. The tallest ski area on the East Coast. You guys know it, right? It's not Killington. It's not Sunday River. It's Beach Mountain. 5,500 feet. Um, it's, you know, you guys have mile high skiing right here in North Carolina. Mount Mitchell is the tallest mountain east of the Rockies. You guys have the high, highest ski areas east of the Rockies. So, um, yeah, coming from the mile high city, you guys are just, just as high or even higher than the mile high city of Denver. So, um, Let's just spend a, a few minutes talking a little bit about some of the demographic characteristics and some of the other not, not expenditure questions that we ask people about. But we ask people a little bit more about their trip, about their visit, where they're from, etc. So, um, 
You know, younger singles or families really tend to dominate the visitor profile here in North Carolina. And like I said earlier, with real focus on millennials industry-wide, not only the ski industry, but I mean any consumer product, any service, hotels, sodas, beers, you name it, every one of those industries is focused on millennials. And you guys have already have millennials coming to ski and snowboarding in North Carolina. Um, average age is 36.4 years. A little more than 50% male, a little less than 50% female. Household income, pretty, you know, moderately high, you know, half are earning between 50 and 150 thousand dollars per household. Uh, one distinctive thing that we find about North Carolina is how important the groups are, and you guys all know this, but I don't think a lot of people outside North Carolina know. The average party size is 6.8 people. Um, most parties are between two and five people, but when you get party group sizes of 20 and Average size is 6.8. The median is four people per party. But when the average is much higher than the median, usually that's the, that's the um, influence of those big groups coming in. So groups are hugely important to a lot of the, the skiing in North Carolina. You, you know, you have buses coming in, you have groups coming in. You have um, um, a high proportion of first time and beginner skiers and snowboarders, and this is one of the big takeaways for me from this study, is that North Carolina plays a huge role in the broader ski and snowboard industry in introducing people to the sport. And like I mentioned, all ski areas nationally are laser focused on how can we improve the experience for first timers so they'll want to keep coming back. And you guys are at the center of that. And you have a much higher share nationally, the first time and the first time and beginner combined is about 10%, and you guys are over 30%. So you have a huge impact on the, the national ski and snowboard industry because you introduce so many people to the sport here in North Carolina. Um, a first time experience for somebody in so your groups, travel parties that come have a first time ski and snowboard. And that's huge, you're getting so many fresh people to come try it, it's fantastic. Um, you guys have 62% skiers, 32% snowboarders, slightly higher than the national average for snowboarding, which we said was 28%. So you got, and that's consistent with a little bit younger age profile that you see here in North Carolina. Um, and that's great because you want to keep that, keep that youth uh, component coming, you want to keep the um, diversity, having diversity of skiers and snowboarders both. You've got, um, and here's another super key statistic, if anybody's really not really listening, listen to this one, okay? 58% of people coming to ski or snowboard are spending the night. That's huge, okay? Um, only 31% were visiting as a day trip, and 11% were residents of the kind of local area. So you've got a really high, nationally the percentage is about 51% overnight visitors, and that includes nationally. So that includes places like Utah and Colorado, where it's 80% of our visitors in Colorado, skiing visitors or overnight visitors. You guys have, I mean, the, and the reason people are coming is to go skiing and snowboarding. It's such a draw, and people spend the night. Everybody knows that overnight visitors spend a lot more money than day visitors. Um, here's, here's the other one that I want you to realize. The same percentage, 58%, from outside the state of North Carolina. So you are drawing people to the North, spend money in North Carolina who don't live in North Carolina. And if you talk to any state tourism development person, that is a golden goose, getting people from other states to spend money in your state. 58% of your skiers and snowboarders live outside of North Carolina. Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, Tennessee. So obviously they're driving in, coming here, ski and snowboard from these other states. 58% of them are from outside of North Carolina. It's huge. Um, in terms of market areas, not just states, but market areas, and this is every, so this includes in-state and out-of-state. Charlotte's your number one market, 22%. Followed, close, followed by Atlanta at 13%. Greenville, Spartanburg, 11%. Raleigh-Durham, Greensboro High Point, Winston-Salem, and then you get into Miami, Orlando, Columbia, South Carolina, 
Charleston, South Carolina. So you can see where people are coming from a long ways to come ski in North Carolina. They're bringing their families, they're bringing their groups, 6.8 people per party. They're spending money, $183 per person. And they are bringing their wallets and they're opening them up and spending their money here in North Carolina because of skiing and snowboarding. Remember, 88% come because of skiing and snowboarding. So, to wrap it up a little bit here, the total economic value was $197.2 million in 2014-15. That's up 34% from five years ago. Industry provides employment, tourism revenue during the four or five month winter period when that's pretty much the low season for tourism in most places. Most people travel in the summertime and they don't travel in the wintertime very much. And so skiing and snowboarding is unique in terms of bringing people out and getting them to travel in the wintertime. So otherwise, you know, some places are pretty busy in the summer, but without skiing and snowboarding, it'd be dead in the wintertime. We've got a high proportion of lower day visitors, 58% are spending the night. That means they're spending on lodging, that means they're spending on dining, that means they're spending on retail stores, that means they're spending money to fill up the car with gas when they drive back to Orlando. So a lot of economic impact from those overnight visitors. There's a lot of other impacts beyond just the dollar signs. I like to really make sure that that's emphasized because we don't want to spend too much focus on just the dollar signs. I mean, that's important, but there's quality of life, the ability to bring people and the visitors to the area, health and wellness, the exposure from events that you can have, the fact that you can draw people here and come for, for skiing and snowboarding is, is hugely beneficial beyond just the dollar signs. And the role that North Carolina plays in the overall industry is huge, not the least of which because it's such an incubator for new skiers and snowboarders. And roles for skiers in North Carolina, but it's also, you know, something the whole industry is looking at. And um, I think some other skiers in other places can learn a lot from North Carolina when it comes to teach teaching beginners and get people to come back. So that's what I have for you guys today. I'd be happy to take some questions. Oh, yeah. Do a question and answer session here in a minute, but I, before we get going and get moving on, I did want to point out that uh, we have Colton Overcash here from Senator Tillis's office. I just wanted to recognize him and thank him for coming and listening to uh, the economic impact of North Carolina Skiers. Thanks, Colton. And uh, also we have uh, Whit Tuttle here from the uh, he's the executive director of Visit North Carolina, so he's here. He's here with. Uh, team of three people. Um, if I'd like him to come up and say a few words too, if you all would like to listen. And then we'll open up for a question and answer session between Whit and um, Dave. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, everybody. I want to be quick. Uh, I was up here uh, last winter and experienced all four seasons in uh, four days uh, when my family was skiing, so uh, I couldn't agree more with what he said. Um, I'm the head of the State Tourism Office uh, and uh, just want to talk a little more about the, the impact. You know, when we looked at those numbers, uh, they fascinated us as well. Didn't surprise us, but uh, it's fascinating. When we compare it to the state, you know, a three-night length of stay is fantastic. Uh, statewide, we get about 2.8 uh, nights. So you're, we're extending that more than what the state would get. That's great. And then the, the group travel is so important. Uh, and typically, we get about uh, two and a half, three people in our party size, travel party size, if you're getting six, that's fantastic. It's really bringing people here. And I think, uh, I'm glad that they pointed this out too. Um, we talk a lot about direct impact and then and we know there's indirect impact. Now we tend not to do it, we deal with a lot of politicians at the state, uh, so they just want to know direct impact. So we talk about things like tourism spending. Our tourism spending is $21.3 billion for the state of North Carolina. That's direct spending. We just really focus on the direct spending. Uh, we employ about 200,000 people in this state in tourism. That's direct employment. And that, those are the numbers he showed you. And those are great, but they're not really realistic because we know that it's not just the people in the ski area 
that's employed by this industry. It's also a part of those people in the restaurants, in the gas stations, in the gift shops. Because without those skiers coming up here and spending that money, those jobs would go away. And so it's really key to say that, that this study was great, those numbers are big, when you showed those direct and indirect, that's the real impact here, and that's jobs too. It's really important for us as fascinating to see that some of these TDAs, most of their money comes in the winter because winter is the slowest season for the state as a whole, for the state of North Carolina. Uh, you know, we have a hard time getting people to come to the state. You don't want to go to the coast in the winter. Some people do, but not a lot of people want to do it. Um, and so this industry is so important because it, it extends that season and makes us a year-round tourism destination, which is what we need to be. And it gets back to customer service as well. If we can employ people year-round, keep them employed, you know, we've got better people serving the visitors and we'll have better customer service. So there's a lot of areas where this is really, you know, very important to the state. Uh, we're big believers in the ski industry. We do a, a co-op advertising program with the uh, with the association uh, every year. We'll continue to do that. We bring travel riders up here and try and spread the message uh, every year. And then um, uh, just excited to be here and happy to see these numbers. We're big believers in them. Uh, and, and I think it's fantastic to see that while na nationally it's down, we're still growing. And, and we know with everything that's going on throughout the state, we're excited with what Sugar's doing. The beach also has done some fantastic things. Catalucci, it's great to see Wolf Ridge here. Uh, and those guys are doing some amazing stuff. And we're excited about a, a great season this year. And that's, that's really it for me. Cool, uh, thanks. Any, any questions or comments? First coffee? identified some parcels in the state uh, to develop the ski area. Um, I want to run through some numbers and maybe Whit, you could speak better to this, what the opportunities are. We looked since your last impact study, which I have here, an increased spend per person of 27%, 35% on direct, 36 on indirect. Uh, out of state visits up 10 percent and yet overnight stays are only 8%. Um, could you speak perhaps to what is the opportunity for growth of this industry? And a second question, uh, in terms of capturing the estimated skiers in the major metro markets you listed, did you estimate what the estimated skiers are in those markets? The total numbers. So here. take Atlanta, for instance, how many estimated skiers live in the Atlanta market? Yeah. I mean, we, we have a lot of those numbers. We didn't we include them in this report. Um, but in terms of your, your question about the growth of the industry, um, you know, the southeast part of the U.S. is one of the fastest growing parts of the country. I mean, places like New York are not really growing, and the northeast is not really growing. Texas is growing. North Carolina is growing. Florida is growing like crazy. Um, so the, the opportunity is there, definitely, for the ski industry to continue to well, Charlotte is, is a you know, huge successful and uh, city, so is Atlanta, those two cities in particular. And those are, those are the markets that are being drawn from. But I think the big increases we saw from five, six years ago was we were just coming out of the recession in the 2009-10 season when we last did this study. So people are spending more, they're spending the night more, they're coming from farther away now than they were five, six years ago because the recession travel was up a lot more now than it was in the 2009-10 season overall. 
So, you know, a lot of factors play into where the opportunity lies, but I think population growth in the southeast in cities like Atlanta and Charlotte, the overall economy, and um, the, the fact that you've got an opportunity for first time to hear from snowboarders to come later are all huge opportunities. Yeah, and I can talk a little about that. As far as general tourism overall, we are increasing. We're up about 5%. We're the sixth most visited state in the country, North Carolina. When you look at population, we're about 10th in population. So we're getting more visitors than we do uh, residents. Uh, so that's kind of punching above your weight on that. That's really good. Our tourism numbers were about 5.4% last year overall. So this key industry is actually outdoing that. Uh, and we're leading the Southeast as far as tourism growth over the past five years. Um, so there's a tremendously strong tourism market for North Carolina. When you look at the state as a whole, only about 30 of our 30 percent of our visitors are um, in-state visitors. Uh, so we get about 70 percent visitation from outside the state, and we have a broad, really, uh, reach. You know, we're in the perfect geographic location uh, for drawing visitors down from the south uh, to the, typically the coastal areas and up from uh, up from the south and down from the north. Uh, but we're now starting to see a lot of spread where we've got northern visitors coming down to the south. Uh, we're seeing huge increases uh, from Ohio, uh, Pennsylvania, those areas, uh, which we traditionally think of as summer visitors, but we do think there's a potential for that market uh, for the ski areas as well. Uh, those people that would have gone to West Virginia and those kind of places as we grow here uh, to capture that audience. So we're excited about that. Uh, you know, I think uh, as the technology is growing here, the, probably the biggest, maybe Kim and Gunther would know this more than anybody, the, part, the biggest, the hardest thing for us is getting the snow. Uh, and as that technology has gotten better, I think uh, if we have the resorts available and space available, we can fill on with visitors. Is North Carolina inhospitable in terms of ski resort development? Historically, it didn't embrace skiing earlier like other regions, blocking communities in other parts of the country that easily converted to ski areas uh, are surrounded by rural blight at this time. And maybe yeah. Telus's office could speak to what are the how hospitable an environment is North Carolina? Uh, Kim could probably, or you know, Randy Johnson might be able to speak to that. Yes. Well, it's all in the direction we don't want to go here. Okay. This is not this is not a meeting for one sole person. This is in the whole area. Yeah. I have a question. Did you look at the ethnicity of skier traffic? It seems that um, there's much more diversity of visitors in this area than there has been in the past. I'm curious. Yeah, yeah. Nationally, um, skiing struggles with uh, ethnic diversity and racial diversity. Um, I, I don't recall the specific numbers, but yeah, North Carolina has one of the most uh, diverse segments. Um, states like Pennsylvania also have a very diverse customer base coming pulling from New York City. Um, you get California has a, a diverse customer base for skiing and snowboarding, and um, yeah, I can't recall the exact numbers where it's definitely more diverse than the national averages. Yeah. Nationally it's about ten or eleven percent non white combined, Asian, black, Hispanic, etc. And um, it's definitely higher in North Carolina. And I think statewide uh, I talk a little more about international. We don't see a, a big we're sixth most visited for domestic. We're about eighteenth when it comes to international visitors. But I think the ski areas are seeing a big part of that pool, particularly with visitors from Latin America. It's part of that connection, you know, a lot of them come up to Florida, and everybody in Florida comes up here to ski, so I think we made a nice connection with that and start to see some of that international visitation. Yeah. I recall in the 2010 report that you produced, you had a category called capital expenditure. Yeah. Now, as a resident of this specific region, it seems to me that the capital expenditures over the last five years have been extraordinarily strong. I did not have that category on this synopsis we received, but I do know it was a little over $3.3 million annually five years ago. What kind of numbers are represented by this? What I have to be um, extensive improvements in what yeah, it's been the past three years, there's been quite a lot of capital capital expenditure. This past season it was $8.5 million. And I have to look it up, but I think it was two seasons ago it was about $10 million. And then the intervening season was a little less, a little more like a $3 million. So the 13-14 um, season 
is relative to the scope of other ski area, uh, ski regions around the country. Yeah, I mean, I think when you look at nationally, we saw those numbers nationally, you, you don't see a ton of growth. It's, it's fairly flat, fairly stable, it kind of goes up and down within a fairly narrow range nationally between about 53 and 60 million in any given season. Um, you know, I think in North Carolina, there's there's a lot of positives, like we, we mentioned before, the proximity to healthy, vibrant cities that are growing, like Atlanta and Charlotte. Um, you've got the opportunity for people to learn skiing and snowboarding. So there's, a, I mean, there's a whole, uh, we, you know, we estimate there's about three percent of all Americans participate in skiing and snowboarding. But for an area that draws a lot of new people, there's 97 percent of the people out there. That don't do it, that's a huge opportunity. And that, now, there's obviously not every single one of them is not going to ski and snowboard. But there's a there's a big opportunity to grow that number from 3% to maybe 3.5% or 4%, and that would make a big difference. And you know, compared to other areas of the country, the the I think the younger age profile that we see in North Carolina is is very encouraging. In in the Northeast, for instance, where you get a lot of skiers in um, skiers in Vermont. New Hampshire, Maine, New York, that's a much older population base, and that population base is getting older. And there's a lot of younger population moving into the southeast. And so compared, I'd say compared to a place like New England, where the population is getting older, versus the southeast, where the population is getting younger, you definitely have a better opportunity here. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. One question: Do uh, you concentrate at all in North Carolina on bringing school children and school classes and school groups to introduce them at a young age? Are there any programs for that? Yeah, I mean that, that's one, one of the groups. We talked about how important groups are to the ski industry here, and, and school groups are one of the big, big components of that mix. Did they pull them from Charlotte and Raleigh and farther away? Definitely Sugar Mountain. I know all of the skiers, Appalachian has a huge group business, as does Catalucci Wolf Lord. We, we all have big group businesses, not just school groups, but also uh, church groups is a, a, a really big pull, um, different civic organizations. So group business, as you saw in the numbers, is definitely a big a big part in, of, of our numbers. And uh, we do market. We do market pretty strongly towards groups. and. We try to take care of them. That they they do get a lot of our attention. Is it a significant portion of your revenue at this point? If if your school groups were to slow down, would it hurt you? You know, it, yeah, sure, it, it could. But we're we're you're not we're all possibly. working very hard to make sure we keep those groups, and we do keep them. No, I understand. Yeah, we don't want to lose any group. No, no families, no groups. You know, we're we're. We don't even think about that. We just keep moving forward. Okay. Being as I'm out of Ontario, when they had the teacher strike two years ago, it actually shut ski resorts down. That was the portion that is so large. Yeah, that's not, I, that's I not think, the portion. I don't it's think that would be a concern so here in the United States. Not here in the United States. Okay. 
Well, I think snow days are fun days here for our school. Thanks to our trees. They open the gates on snow days. Yeah, it's beautiful. With, is there likely to be a resurgence in um, in uh, ski area marketing? You think? Um, uh, I mean, I know that has fluctuated over, over the years. What do you see as? I, I don't mean necessarily the statewide budget for for tourism marketing, but I mean, how, how do you see skiing um, fluctuating with the? Uh, I think so. You know, I think it, it, it's trending in the right way. You, you look at uh, things, and it's especially important for us. And another great thing Dave pointed out: we look at things that are attractors versus just attractions. And so when a visitor makes a decision to come to a place, uh, say they go to Charlotte, they may go to Charlotte and they may go to a restaurant, but they didn't come to Charlotte to go to that restaurant. Where if they did, that's an attractor versus an attraction. And I think what this part of what this research shows is that these ski resorts are attractors. People are making the conscious decision to come here because of this. Uh, so it's important for us to support them because you need those things uh, that make people make that travel decision, and that's what, what we're looking for. Um, and then all the other businesses benefit from that because the people have made the decision to come here. Uh, and then I'll go to Banner Out Cafe and I'll, I'll do 20 other things with my kids while I'm up here and go to Fred's and all that kind of stuff. Um, but so that, that's a big key is that these are attractors, and I think that's huge. Uh, and I, when we look at this, we look at we often look at different what you would call niches that people might want to do. You look at things like golf, and that's really on the decline, I think, uh, because you know there are all different sorts of factors beyond marketing that just contribute to that. And I don't think the ski industry is seeing that because I think that you know the millennials love it. Uh, and they're a great power group coming up uh, that everybody's interested in marketing to um, because they're spending a lot of money. Uh, so I think that this will, that will continue to increase as we all try and attract that millennial audience, which is huge. Uh, and as the baby boomers decline and uh, become less relevant to marketers. Uh, as far as the state, I hope we get to do more because that would probably mean we have more money. <laughs> and, and that's always, you know, our, our contribution is contingent on the, on the funds. But the ski areas, uh, for our joint co-op that we do every year, they've stepped up and they provide a lot of funds for that. And we continue to do so. David, some of you from the, the numbers and the stats that you're quoting that North Carolina is doing a lot of things good and right. And uh, as a citizen just of the community and not really uh, of, of, in any official capacity associated with the ski businesses, I applaud all of those who are working so hard to uh, make this a major industry in the state and have been very successful. In the course of your review analysis, you may not even care to answer this, but did you see any glaring omissions or opportunities that were missing? I, I wouldn't say any omissions. Uh, one, you know, one observation that's in the report actually looks at um, <clears throat> the frequency with which people who ski in North Carolina, the number of days that they ski per winter season. And, and North Carolina tends towards a smaller number of days per person per winter compared to some of the national averages we see. And I, I think that's a bit of a function of people are driving, if they're driving all the way to Florida, they're going to come once, ski three days and then go home, that's fine. Um, but there could be an opportunity there to increase the frequency of the people who do come, to come maybe come back in the same season come back again, maybe increase that number of average days that they're skiing per winter a little bit, you know, half a day more on average per person would make a big difference in the total numbers. So that's one area of opportunity, but I think the, the flip side of that is that you've got a lot of first timers, so, and that's good, so you, by, by, you know, naturally you're going to have a fewer, a lower average number of days per person because you have so many first timers. So it's a little bit of a balance. You've got a lot of first timers and beginners, which is great. And, and thinking about balancing that out with getting the repeat people to keep coming back within the same season. Thank you. Randy, have you ever, have you ever seen there? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I live in Colorado now, but I lived in North Carolina for two years. I went to grad school at Duke University and got my MBA there. And I was very impressed with the state of North Carolina, the diversity of attractions that there are and attractors. You got the coast, you got the beach, you know, like it's Pangolin and Kill Devil Hills, and 
Um, we spend time out there at, at the beach. We come up to the mountains and go hiking in the fall. Um, just the, the diversity of, of attractions in the state of North Carolina was really impressive to me during the two years that I lived here. And I think having the ski resorts to balance out the wintertime and contribute during a traditionally slow time in the tourism economy is one of the key strengths of the ski resort industry. I'd be happy to take any other questions up here if you guys want to grab me. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Again, thank you all for coming. If you'd like to get a drink, uh, we've got some soft drinks and water and stuff. There if you want. Again, to get the full report, it's on uh, goski.nc.com. Uh, it's a full report. Yeah. Thank you.